Michael O'Leary with us around the table, the Ryanair CEO. Michael, I wish people could see your face as Ed Bastian was speaking, <laughs> just to get some reaction. It's good to see you. Good morning. It's great to be here, John, Lisa. Good to talk to you again. Well, thank you, buddy. You've had earnings out this morning. We've been talking about this dividend of 400 million euros. We've got to talk about this relationship with Boeing. I want to share a couple of quotes with you yep. and then try and get some clarity. So you said in the last week, if anything gets getting worse, I would have been reasonably confident up until about a month ago that we'd get 57 aircraft by the end of June. I'm not confident. We heard from your CFO this this morning said the worst case scenario is that we'll end up with growth of 47 aircraft next summer instead of 57. Help me understand where things are. What did you want and what do you think you're going to get? Yeah, I mean, in our case, Boeing are contracted to deliver us 57 aircraft by the end of April 24. In other words, 57 additional aircraft for summer 24. At the moment, that has slipped by the spirit production issues in Wichita, Boeing's own production issues in Seattle. Uh, I think now it looks like we'll get, they'll leave us maybe 10 short by about the end of June. We're Hopefully we get 45, 50 aircraft by the end of June. We said to Boeing, we're not taking planes in July and August because, frankly, we're too busy. Um, but we're reasonably hopeful that we'll get 45, 50 aircraft from. They will leave us short. I think that's inevitable at this point in time, uh, which means we'll have slightly slower growth next summer. But we'll still add 45 aircraft. It'll still be enough to, to enable us to grow traffic from 183 million passengers this year to just over 200 million passengers. Is there a year. number you have in mind whereby you would have to cut capacity for next summer? Uh, there isn't. I mean, we haven't yet announced what the capacity will be next summer. As we said this morning, we have 90% of our summer 24 capacity already on sale, strong forward bookings, good pricing. But we can't commit to the last 10% until we get a better picture from Boeing. I speak weekly with Dave Calhoun. I think he's doing a good job in difficult circumstances. I have less faith in the management in Seattle. Uh, but I think, you know, we're working closely with them. We have our own people in Seattle. We have our own people in Spirit and Wichita. And anything we can do to expedite these deliveries will do because growth is so strong in Europe. What is it about the management in Seattle? What are they getting wrong? Ah. I think there isn't enough focus there on a daily basis of how do we get with these aircraft out. Everybody is kind of wringing their hands, blaming Wichita. You know, a lot of the issues are in Seattle as well. They need a more crisis. I would like to see greater crisis management in Seattle um, and greater focus on quality control. Uh, if you, you know, I don't understand how Wichita, Spirit and Wichita are able to have this succession of, man of, of production problems if Boeing's quality control was up to speed. Do you have options? Options in terms of? What do you do if you don't want to work with Boeing anymore? I don't know. No, no. Let's say we want to work with Boeing. We're Boeing's biggest customer by a mile in Europe. Uh, we're a committed Boeing customer. Now, I would buy Airbus aircraft if they were 5% cheaper per seat than Boeing. But Boeing continue to beat Airbus on pricing. The 737 MAX is a phenomenal aircraft. Like we've, we now, this summer, we've flown 125 of the MAX 8 aircraft. We're carrying 4% more passengers, but burning 16% less fuel. You know, they're transformative in terms of the engine and aircraft efficiency. We've we ordered 300 MAX 10s, which will allow us to carry 228 pa passengers per flight and burn 20% less fuel. So they're making great aircraft. It's just they're not making them on time or delivering them in time. Is it fair to say, though, this is a relationship you're stuck with regardless of what it delivers next year? I mean, yes. You know, we're committed to Boeing. If you look around the world, the aircraft manufacturers, I mean, Airbus are no better than Boeing at the moment. Airbus are way behind on their deliveries, too. You have the Pratt & Whitney engine, which is going to be a real crisis next summer, across the A320 fleet in Europe, you know, the Pratt & Whitney engine is going to ground a significant number of Airbus aircraft next summer. So all of the aircraft manufacturers are challenged. We're a very proud Boeing customer. I think Boeing will get its act together. It's just taking a bit longer than we had originally hoped. In the meantime, how far can you jack up prices if capacity is constrained? I mean, I think that the real issue for Elise is not how much will we jack up prices, how much will Lufthansa, Air France, IAG or BA keep jacking up prices? And the answer is a lot. You know, uh, Eurocontrol estimate this summer, Europe's operated about 94% of pre-COVID capacity. That includes us growing by 25%. So take Ryanair away. Europe's still at less than 90% of pre-COVID capacity. That's not changing next year. The aircraft manufacturers are delivering aircraft late. The Pratt & Whitney will mean 5 10% of the Airbus fleet would be grounded and consolidated. Lufthansa will buy Alitalia, somebody else will buy TAP, and there'll be even less capacity on offer. Okay, so this is good news for you because you don't have to uh, really have to try too 
hard to be the lowest cost aircraft while still raising prices. How much are you yeah. going to raise prices next year? We are price passive, load factor active. I think what's happening is how much, if Lufthansa, Air France, KLM will drive up fares, I, I think by a double digit number next year, it'll send even more people in the direction of Ryanair. People want to keep flying, families want to go on holidays, they just don't want to pay Lufthansa's outrageous prices. So I think fares that next year, I mean, my operating assumption is fares will go up by a low double digit percentage again through the summer of 24 to be the third year in a row, third summer in a row, we'll see double digit fare increases in Europe. This is the first year, that, the first time that you're initiating a dividend. Yep. It's a 400 pound dividend. It is the first time. Does this mean that you have nothing else to do with that money? Essentially, yes. You know, we, I mean, it's not the first time we've done dividends. We've done special dividends and share buybacks. We've done about seven billion in share buybacks and special dividends. But you know, we're clearly generating a lot of cash at the moment. We've paid down about two billion in debt. We're down to our last two billion in bond debt. We'll pay that down over the next three years. And we're generating more cash than we know what to do with. We have specific requirements. Firstly, was to uh, do pay increases for our people who worked with us during COVID. Secondly, was to pay down the bonds. And thirdly, is to fund. Uh, aircraft deliveries but we're running out of the existing order we take the last aircraft in December 2024 the first of the max 10s doesn't arrive till January 27 so we're looking into two or three years where we have effectively very little uses for cash and I think it's a commitment on our part we'll return it to shareholders we won't uh, squander it the way many other airlines do in M&A or buying hotels or whatever or, or, uh, or, or, as Delta, or, as, or as Delta would do giving monstrous pay increases to its pilots over the next four or five years uh, we need to keep our costs low keep our efficiency high and keep passing on unbeatable airfares to our customers. Do you think shareholders then can expect more of the same over the next few years? I think so. As long as trading continues, you know, who knows what's going to happen in Ukraine or in the Middle East, but as long as we get a reasonable wind on uh, trading, then I think we will continue to be very cash generative and we will return large amounts of cash to shareholders. It's hard to know what is going to happen in Ukraine in the Middle East. I don't expect you to give us a projection. I do want to understand though, are you seeing things slow down in any way, shape or form when you start to see these things escalate? Like, anything at all? No, I mean, well, we saw the initial, when, we, when Russia invaded Ukraine in February 2022, 20, 20, 22 or three, I can't remember, you know, there was a, a sudden downturn in all of our traffic into Poland, Romania, those countries. It recovered after two or three weeks. We've had to suspend, we're suspending all flights. We have about 30 flights a day into Tel Aviv. Uh, they've been suspended until Christmas. Uh, so we do want to see those, uh, those um, scenarios resolve themselves. But the ultimate underlying trend across Europe, we've locked up everybody for two years ago. COVID. They all want to go back traveling. Families want to go on holidays. We've just completed the October midterm break. We were still full. Um, and I think what people want is to travel more, but there's only 90% of the pre-COVID capacity. So in Europe, you've constrained capacity, enormous demand, and that is resulting in very strong pricing, not just for Ryanair, but for all of the airlines. Are you noticing any trade down? I hate to describe it as trade down from BA to, to Ryanair, but are you noticing anything like that? Not at the moment, okay. um, but you know, I think it's inevitable if the next year or two, if consumers are under pressure, I think you know, you'll see the little and Aldi's in the supermarkets, IKEA will do very well and Ryanair will do very well. So what about using some of the cash to make the experience nicer for people who might be frustrated with okay, the At least experience. it'd be impossible oh, to grandma. make the experience on Ryanair any nicer. <laughs> you know, new aircraft, okay. <laughs> on-time flights, the fewest cancellations of any airline in Europe. I mean, I don't understand why people pay such ridiculous airfares for a horrendous experience on Lufthansa who lose your bag, miss your connection. On Ryanair, <laughs> it's efficient, it's cheap, it's on time, and it is beloved like a man that might by 184 million people. Once upon a time. Yeah, did, you? <laughs> did you lose luggage? I had to do on a, on a road show a year ago. I had to fly from Frankfurt to Zurich, which is only about a one and a half hour flight. Sure. Uh, they stung me for 900 euros uh, one way in economy, and I was sitting in the back in the middle seat in front of the toilet on an Edelweiss A320. I mean, 700 euros. I can fly all year round on Ryanair for 700 euros. Michael, it's good to see you. Thanks Great for joining you, us. John, Lisa. Thanks Fantastic. Thank you so Great much. to see you. Michael O'Leary there, the Ryanair CEO.